Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. So, oof, where do I start off with first? You know what? Let's start off with Alexis and Gregory, because I'm going to be honest, this plan seems entirely stupid, right? Their plan <laughs> is to sit there and get this judge for an interview, puff him up, um... You know, really tried to, you know, um, I guess feed his ego, right? And then they plan on ambushing him. And that's what they do. They talk about his, his stance and his career and what got him into the law and everything like that. And then they talk about a particular case. Um, and the way that he answered, he's like, I don't know this person. Like, well, yeah, I mean, I, I've heard of him, but I've never, I never actually met this person before. And Lex is like, wait, that's not entirely true. You know, and they bring up the time that, you know, he did actually meet him. It's so now the judge is kind of standing there looking stupid, like, well, I don't, like, what, well, you know, and so he's like, where, where, where did you get this information from? But, okay, let's just sit there and say, you, you know, that this plan goes out, you ambush him, then what? Then what? What is what is that ultimately going to wind up doing? I don't understand how ambushing this judge is going to do anything positive for Jura. It's either gonna be like, Oh, you caught me in a lie. Well, um uh yeah, I, I guess I'll sit there and do what you say. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I feel like you won. I don't understand how that's going to translate into getting the judge to either give Drew a reduced sentence or, you know, vacate his sentence to home or something like that. I don't understand how that's going to work. Okay. The only thing he's going to sit there and do is going, the only thing he's going to want to doing, he's just going to sit there and get upset and then just leave. You don't have anything on him. You know, I, I get that they're they're trying to prove a certain level of bias, but that's just hearsay. And even this interview, all you're doing is pointing out something that a basic law student can sit there and look at that and be like, oh, I can see a pattern. So what? Not really getting the payoff here, but um, I guess Tom will sit there and tell, or GH will sit there and somehow force, <laughs> force this to go through for the plot, because, you know, when I sit there and say by soap opera, it's plot versus common sense and logic. Plot always wins out. Now let's get to Trina and Spencer. Starts off nice, sweet. You know, he brings her um, tea or a latte or something like that. They get to talking. And then things go sideways and they start talking about Ace and Esme. Right? Because I'm looking at this argument and because that's literally what it is at this point. I'm looking at this argument, and it's not even so much a right versus wrong, right? Like, both of them have very valid points. But at the end of the day, well, Ace is always going to be a part of Spencer's life, and that's going to come with Esme. Okay? It's always going to be a package deal. But I understood where as I understood where Trina was coming from as far as, you know, that's not your child, right? You know, because the argument came in from the fact that Spencer does not want Nicholas back in their lives. He feels that they already have a routine going, they're good, everything is solid, they don't need him coming there and mucking it up. And Trina's like, you know, at the end of the day, that's not your son. Ace will benefit from being with his father. You talk all harsh about him, but at some point, he must have been good to you because you turned out the way that you turned out. So let's not sit there and try to act like he didn't have a hand in that. This conversation goes south, right? And it goes so south that Trina winds up asking Spencer, well, what do you want for your future? What do you, what do you see your future looking like? And to be honest, that's not a question that most, even people my age, they can't sit there and ask, you know, answer, what do you see yourself in five years? But she goes on and on and on and on about that for a good hot minute. And I'm just like, he doesn't know. He's literally 20-something years old. 
I get that you may have your 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 life mapped out, but that doesn't mean that he does, right? And honestly, tell you the truth, that 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 question was so left field. This is how out of step in a lot of ways that they are. When you start asking random questions like that, now, granted, they didn't want to break it up or anything like that, you know, but there's a wall there. You know, while Spencer isn't they're trying to see the, the positive sides and Esme changing and things of that nature, you know, Trina's like, yo, listen, that's the same chick that 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 drugged me and violated my best friends. Um so I'm going to sit there and look at her like the enemy. And it's not like Spencer's not. I mean, this is why he has the fake evidence, just to sit there and kind of keep her in line. You know, this is one of those things where it's like, how much baggage is too much baggage, right? I mean, granted, yeah, it's Ace and Esme, but, you know, from Trina's point of view and for any person that's in there dating him, that's baggage. That is back. That is what is. That is what is mean to sit there and be in a relationship with somebody who has a child. You know, I mean, granted, not everyone is going to be an Esme or just a terrible person, but that does come along with 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 the situation. So sometimes you got to sit there and ask yourself: Is it worth being with that person, knowing all the stuff that they got going on? Because things like that do wind up happening, and they are far too young to be sitting there dealing. With drama like that, older people have a hard time and nearly impossible times that they're dealing with a situation like that. And they're in their 20s or their teens or whatever the hell age that they're supposed to be. So, yeah, that's the question. Um, ben and Liz, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> They do nothing for me. They they generally do nothing for me. I know they're supposed to be there to keep the romance going and stuff like that. But the only thing that wound up happening was Ben asked for for a weekend in the cabins or you know weekends at, at, at some cabins, and she says yes. And then Ben and and TJ talk about how happy he is and how happy TJ is. In case anyone actually still cares about that stupid Sergeant storyline. Um, that's still going. The only thing that I found interesting about the Maxie and Felicia scene was when Felicia was like, you know, at some point you're going to have to forget Brooklyn. Because it wasn't that long ago that you were sitting there doing plotting and scheming and lying and stuff like that and blackmailing or being blackmailed or whatever the hell you sit that you sat there and did in your earlier years. So you should probably have a little bit more grace and more compassion when it comes towards Brooklyn. And she, you know, she understood that. You know, at first she was mad and felt betrayed. But then looking at her own history, she's like, yeah, I don't really have room to judge. See, that was the thing with her and Lulu not that long ago. You know, she got all upset with Lulu because, um, you know, what she did. But it was like, bro, you made mistakes in your life as well. And I get it sometimes. It's very easy to sit there and be mad and caught in your feelings and only think about the rage and the anger and not bother to take a step back and be like, you know what? I've done some pretty messed up stuff too. I've done some pretty messed up to this person as well. Maybe I should sit there and kind of look at it from a different point of view. He also talked about Sasha, which, I mean, does she even know that she's being replaced as, as the face of deception? Or is it just kind of a moot point? Because, you know, she does sit there and say, well, you know, I meant Sasha. I didn't have the heart to sit there and tell her um, all the bad stuff that wound up happening, so I just wanted to wish her farewell. Okay, cool. So when are you going to have this conversation? When, 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 when is she going to find out? When is she going to find out that she's being replaced? I mean, she's not being fired, but that is a that is a position that she she had. You're going to have to have a conversation with her. I guess maybe it's easier to do it over the phone than it is to sit there and do it in person, so... Maybe it kind of works out for her. Maybe, maybe it actually does work out for her. Maybe it works out for Maxi and Lucy. Whoever got to sit there and give her the bad news. Portia came in there pissed off at Jordan. I was like, you know, Jordan and, and Anna are supposed to be talking about the same conversation that Anna has been having 
who's been targeting me? Is it WSBA, um, um, WSB? Da, 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 da. Same conversation, being super paranoid, whatever. Um, because they, she wants to sit there and sit like in a corner somewhere. She wants to sit down there and open. Yeah, you know what? I take that back. Somebody did try to shoot her. Never mind. Um, but they're talking, catching up and everything. And Portia's like, you know, how dare you not sit there and tell me this or whatever? And it's like, uh, hello to you too. You know, Jordan even sit there now. Jordan has sit there one of calling to find out why come I, why come nobody told me that, that Cyrus was being released. Of course, Portia doesn't sit there and apologize to her because, you know, that would sit there and make sense. Um, well, Portia just gets on my nerves. She, she really, really does. She can even sit there. And, I, I'm just thinking about that. She can even sit there and apologize after she found out that Jordan even know about Cyrus' release. But they sit there and they talk about it. Portia's upset about it. Um, Anna and Jordan are just like, yo, listen, there's nothing they can do. You know, he's he's the feeble old man. He's playing a he's playing an old man card. Um, so, Matt, uh, you know, I can't wait to sit there and see how Trina's going to sit there and react. And Valentine tells Anna about Charlotte's behavior and the fact that Charlotte is behind all the all this stuff. The the Trash in the hotel, the fire and everything like that. For the most part, Laura's like disbelief. I mean, she literally like, I can't believe she did that. I can't believe she did that. Do you don't you not sit there and think like for a good twenty something minutes, he has to sit there and try to convince her that yeah, she's behind all this stuff. She's doing this out of jealousy, out of spite. Um, you know, because of Anna. It's like, I don't understand. How come my sweet girl is like, because she's a teenager now? Like, what, what are you not grasping about this? I don't know. It's just, I felt like they wasn't there playing Laura like she was an idiot for like a good couple of minutes. Like, well, I just don't believe it. I can't believe it. I'm like, okay, sure. He's just, he's just making it up. All just making it up. Um, and then they realized that most, well, then Laura realized that mostly Victor had a hand in this whole thing. You know, brainwashing her or something like that. His influence, whatever it is, which is okay, fine. His influence is, you know, the trigger reason of why she's doing what she's doing. It, it doesn't matter at this point. That what matters is what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? This has been more of a strategy session on how to sit there and help Charlotte. Not 20, 30 minutes of simply trying to get Laura to believe that she's doing all this stuff and then coming to the conclusion, oh, I think Victor has something to do with it. Okay, cool. So are we gonna get this check in some therapy or like like what 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 are we doing? Like what's the solution to this? Not I know soap operas have to move at a certain pace, but I don't expect this thing to be wrapped up. But even something like this where it's like really? I feel like that's about it. I can't really think of anything else. Now, just one other thing I want to sit there and say before I go is just the Liz character, her storyline so far. You know, I, I know a lot of people do not like Liz with Finn. They find them boring. They have no chemistry, yada, yada, yada. I just find them to just be completely boring. And it's one of those things where it's like Liz has been on the show for such a long time. She's been on the show for a hell of a long time. And to reduce this woman, they give her one good story. And a lot of people were still upset because he felt like Finn hijacked her story. They give her one story. And what are they doing with her now? What are they doing with her now? I know that every character can be front and burner, but it's like this chick has been on the show for over 20 something years and this is the best that you could sit there and give her. You know, sometimes I, I sit there and I watch this show and I watch these scenes of Liz and not only am I just bored to tears, but most of they're thinking if this was any other character, if this was a new character that came in and they gave her this level of, of boredom with a storyline, they would have had that chick on. If it wasn't for the fact that Liz has been on, hasn't, you know, if it wasn't for the fact that Liz has been on for like over 20 something years, she would have been gone. You know, we like the character, 
We just want her to do something more than just these stupid scenes with Finn. You know, even the scene where she was making out in the shower was just so dumb. It was so stupid. And I know, I know some people actually like them, which... That's awesome, but, like, this is what they have to shit doing after 20-something years. This is the best that you can sit there and give Liz as a character. I don't even have any words for it. I just, I, I really, I don't have any words left for it. Anyway, I feel like that's pretty much about it. If I missed anything, you know what to do. Come to the live stream tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We'll sit there and talk about all the shows. General Hospital, Days of Our Lives, Born and Beautiful, and Young and Restless. And if you are not a member, make sure you hit the join button in the description box below. Definitely become a member. I do exclusive live streams for members only, which are a lot of fun. As anyone who have been in regular live streams. I do exclusive videos. I am putting out two videos, although one video I'm kind of like very up and down about putting it out because it's a little kind of controversial. Um, but I put out exclusive videos, members only, and I do mom monthly member shout outs. And each and every single month, I will sit there and shout out your name um, as a thank you to just supporting the channel, being part of the channel, and just coming along with me on this journey. With that being said, I'm going to go. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. I'll see you in the next video.